Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to African and Pregnant. This is episode three, and this is where my pregnancy was lit, 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 so lit. I had so much fun. Okay, so first off, let's start with the fact that I left Lagos, Nigeria for London. Um, I went to United Kingdom um, to just enjoy summer, basically. Uh, my husband, I had to leave behind. This is really sad. Take a look at me leaving him. Mm. All right, so I'm going now. I really don't want to go, but I'm going to be late. So, yeah. I see you. Okay. Yes. Love you. Love you. While I was pregnant, I think I was really nice. I don't think I was moany or anything like that. I think I, think I was a really nice pregnant person. When Stephanie's not pregnant, she's very whiny. She, she nags and complains. Well, not nags, but complains and everything. It's annoying. So being pregnant heightened all of this. So everything was annoying. Everything was smelling. Everything was uncomfortable. And she was always hot. Oh yeah, and while I was pregnant, I didn't eat as much as like other pregnant people that I was around. Like, I think I was watching my weight and I didn't want to um, develop gestational diabetes. So I was trying to manage my sugar level as well, my sugar intake. So it's time to fly. And um, yeah, I, I um, was really trying to be in, um, what's the word? Incognito, inconspicuous. Conspicuous? Yeah, conspicuous, I think. So I was literally trying to hide at the airport, like, no, please, nobody see me with my belly. Who wears a black stretchy dress that's tight when they're trying to hide? Oh, when I got to the airport, I was like, this was so dumb. Like, why didn't I just wear joggers? Anyway, of course, somebody saw me. Um, I think it was my, my cousin's friend. And she was like, hi. And I was like, hi. Hi, hi. But um, yeah, it was a really nice flight. I ate so much. And also I met someone on, so on the way um, to the gate, I met this lady. She was so amazing and really, really helpful. Um, she, I don't know, when you're pregnant, people just are so nice. Like I never knew human beings were this nice until I I'm literally, I'm literally out of breath and a lady has helped me with my laptop, so she's helped me carry it. Um, but yeah, I'm so out of breath. I can't wait to sit down. This. So yeah, she was super nice. She helped me, me with my bags. She helped me settle in and everything. So yeah, um, I ate so much on that flight. I'm not even gonna lie. Like second trimester, I was just eating, eating anyhow. Like I was eating. <laughs> I ate everything they brought on that plane. So I pay for it when I landed. So I'm at Heathrow Airport and I'm just holding my stomach. I'm like, is this baby playing games? No, it was my stomach. Like I was in so much pain. So we had to stop at KFC and dry the drive-through. And they um they gave me like warm water. So like it would help my stomach. But honestly, guys, that was just the worst. Like it was so painful. And um after that I started to be careful what I ate because you know, when you're pregnant, you're not supposed to be eating sugar, you're supposed to be eating vegetables and stuff. So that's when I started to really take note of my diet. Anyway, now I'm in the UK, I've got my plans ready. So first up, I'm like, yes, I need to enroll in prenatal yoga because this is gonna help me, you know, open up my uterus and all those places that need to be stretched out so baby can come out easily and things like that. And I'm like, just, you know, enjoying summer. So I decided to take prenatal yoga classes and I did um, take a, I did take one so you guys could watch the class because they don't allow people in. So check it out. Very good. Bend the front leg. That's it. A little bend. You can move your head as well. A little bit so the neck releases. Lovely. Lift, lift, lift. Beautiful. Breathe deeply up there. And then exhale, release. Good. Stay low. Stay low. Don't move anymore. Just dig the heel in. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah? Yeah, that was a bit... That was intense. Yes, there you go. <sighs> but not so intense, like childbirth, right? Oh, so you can still breathe through the nose. Oh, all right, here we go. 
All right, so yes, so prenatal yoga is not just for white people. It's not just for Caucasian people. Every race should jump on yoga, um, especially if you're pregnant. I think it's really good for your, um, just your movement and to relax yourself. And um, also to, as I said, in terms of like your baby coming out and stuff, I think it actually does help, especially with your breathing and things like that. I think it allows you, it helps you to be calm and relaxed. All right, so another activity that I did um, was swimming. So I can't really swim. Like I don't know. I, I don't think that many Nigerians know how to swim anyway. So I'm not like I'm not embarrassed. Like I can't swim. Like I learned how to swim, but I just don't. I don't know how to swim. So I thought it would be good to um, swim. <laughs> not swim because if I if I say this, my husband will be like, "You weren't really swimming. You're sitting in the pool." <laughs> so I. I did go to the leisure center and I like swam with the little band things and it really helped. It really helps with the um, relaxation and also it helps with your blood, I think your blood rate, it helps your, the blood flow anyway. And um, I, my feet got really swollen while I was pregnant. So it really did help keep the weight off my feet whilst I was swimming slash hanging by the pool in the water, taking the weight off. But yeah, it was really, really good. Um, but one of the reasons why it took me so long to get to the swimming pool was because I was always shopping. Like, I feel like nobody can shop for your baby for you in terms of like the wardrobe, like the first little pieces of clothes that you wanna buy. So I would spend my days on Oxford Street, like going to the kids stores um, and also like mother care, but it's closed down now sad and also um like stores like selfridges and h&m and zara they had so many cute baby clothes so i was always in there constantly shopping you can actually see i was constantly shopping look at these videos it's actually really bad i would spend every day there Yeah, I made it to the vlog or video or documentary well, or yeah, whatever. Just, you know, I made it, guys. Yeah. So yeah, we do know each other. <laughs> yeah, I know her apparently. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and look at the cute, cute yeah. baby mama, cute yeah. wife, yeah. Yeah. cute yeah. pregnant lady. She's quite cute, annoying but quite cute. <laughs> Baby's gonna be just like me. All right, so we're doing more shopping now. We're at Mother Care. And um, I've spotted the Nuna brand. Oh my god, I really, really, really love this brand. Yes, so I did a lot of shopping. Now, this is why I said that my pre that um, second trimester was so lit because I was able to walk around. You know, in Nigeria, you can't really just be walking in the sun. And I was, I felt like I was a bit more free because obviously people don't know me in the UK as much as they do in Nigeria. So I was free to roam the streets. I, although I did bump into a couple of people and they were like, oh, you're pregnant. I'm like, <laughs> once again, <laughs> no, you can't see, can you? You blinded to it, right? No. So yeah, I was literally like, yeah, I'm pregnant. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I felt like more free and just able to roam the streets until, dun, 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 certain blog decided to post that I was pregnant. People are going to comment and just say whatever they like. Like there's so many different random rumors or things that people think are true that I just don't care to address because at the end of the day, it doesn't affect me directly really. But when you're pregnant, it's different. So what I could handle when I wasn't pregnant is different from when I was pregnant. So I felt like this certain blogger who is a female, I felt like it was really out of order for her, especially after my husband called them to take it down because it was affecting me because I people obviously writing crap. And, that, and, and that's the thing, they don't know what they're talking about. So when you're pregnant, it's like, like I just want to crush you. <laughs> but you know what, I just let it go. I was like, you know what, I'm here living my good life, minding my business, <laughs> buying clothes for my baby was my own. It's okay, continue. So I just let that slide. Um, but yeah, guys, it's really annoying, you know? When it, I think we need to have a bit more privacy. Um, I know we're celebrities or media people, but I think sometimes even your family members, I think you should kind of take it easy on women that are pregnant because when you're pregnant, your hormones are really all over the place. So any little thing can make her cry, stressed, or like even affect the baby. So people think it's just fun and gist, but it's not. It's almost like they're waiting for your downfall. And I'm like, I get it, whatever. You're, if it makes you happy, fine. But I think it's just extra wicked when you know the person has just given birth and you know that their mind is very fragile or when they're pregnant, their mind is very fragile. So I just want to put that out there. But um, yeah, that happened and I was really annoyed about it, but 
I got over it quickly because I went to go, I went to the spa, had a nice facial and had a cup of tea and I relaxed my nerves. <laughs> All right, what else happens? So I had a baby shower. Now, um, I'm very controlling. So I decided to plan this baby shower by myself, not by myself, but I organized everything. So I found the decorators, I found the venue. My baby shower was at Grosvenor, Grosvenor House. Um, on Park Lane and we hired out the suite at is this suite, is this suite? Hired out the suite and I got event soiree um, to decorate. They did an amazing job. Now before I found them, because they were quoting like all these people were quoting all these funny, funny prices for balloon. Like I don't I, I know sometimes you know we look flashy and stuff, but I don't like wasting money. Why would I be paying like five hundred pounds for balloon for air? Air in plastic. Like I don't get it. That you're going to pop. Anyway these guys did a really great job. And at the end of the day, I still took my balloons home. I just wanted to, just, <laughs> I wanted you to, in case you thought I left those balloons in this suite, I did not, I took them to my house. So anyway, um, yeah, it was an amazing day. I decided to have afternoon tea as a theme because first of all, I'm very big on pictures and aesthetics. And aesthetically, um, afternoon tea looks really nice. I don't care if you've eaten the sandwich 10 times, that, that I, you're just gonna have to eat it 10 times. And if you're hungry after, you just, you know, will find your way to the restaurant. My mum thought she was gonna sneak jello fries in, but I want her. No African food. I was telling her, why can't I bring jello fries? All they are giving us, they said we're having afternoon tea. Afternoon tea, okay. <laughs> Even though my cousin who likes food was there saying, where's the J rice? You will come to my house and eat it, you'll be fine. But for that day, baby showers, I feel like they should just look nice and clean and simple, you know, pretty. But um, yeah, I, I managed to do that. Um, and we had we had loads of games. Off, I invited the aunties really late because I was like, I don't want these, I don't want them at my baby shower. They're just gonna, I don't know, I thought they were just gonna change the vibe, but they made it really fun. And also, they were so competitive, it was a joke. Like, they were literally screaming at each other. I remember my one aunt, she was so angry that her team didn't get what she was saying in the charades. She, <laughs> she used to see it. Yeah, it was really, really good. It was a good day, a really good outing. And um, my cake was nice. Everything was just as I planned. And yeah, it was just a good day. Now, after that, I did go on a baby moon. I told you guys, I traveled a lot during my conception and pregnancy, I traveled a lot as well. So I went to Paris to meet my husband and we had an amazing baby moon. Now my mom, during my stay, like during my stay in the UK, oh, my mum came up with, telling me about all these pregnancy myths. You're not allowed to walk past 12 a.m. Like there was one night I was out at like 1 a.m. She's like, you're not supposed to be out pregnant at 1 a.m. You're not really supposed to be wearing black or red. So here my mum is, and she is gonna tell us a bit about the African myths or like old wives tales that she told me when I was pregnant. And some of them I'm hearing, she just said because she just didn't want me to do certain things. Some of them don't really exist. Mum, so what was the one about walking in the sun? You are not allowed to walk in the sun because they think evil child will enter your tummy. Like walking in the night after 12 midnight. And then... Why can't you walk after 12 midnight? Yeah, well, same thing as walking in the sun. It's an evil child. Evil child, yes. Or you might meet, you know, walking at night, they believe that dead people walk in the night or, you know, spirits walk in the night. Okay. So that's why they said you cannot walk in the night as a pregnant woman. All the clothes, I'm, I'm trying to hide here. So all the clothes that I brought were black. And every day she's like, you're wearing black again. I had to start buying white clothes. Like literally I had to shop and buy new clothes because it was coming too much. She's like, why do you want to keep wearing black? I'm like, what do you think is going to happen because I'm wearing black? Black, red, to so many people's belief is associated with bad luck. Thank you for sharing that. And I will You're not, I'll put all my black clothes back when I'm pregnant again. Just not so wear, no, Why? I will not allow it. You can do that when I'm not around with you, but when you are with me, I don't want black clothes. 
Uh, back to my baby moon. My baby moon was amazing. Check it out, I did a lot of shopping and something interesting really happened. It was interesting and painful. Check it out. Why are you making it the door, creep? <laughs> I would run, but you know, I've got extra luggage in my, in my son. Hi! Hi! What's up, Rodrigo? Hi! Oh my gosh, I oh. missed you! Boyfriend, look at my boyfriend. <laughs> okay guys, so I am on a mission to find um what I can cut this ring off. My wedding ring and engagement ring got stuck on my finger. It was the most hellish experience I've ever experienced in my life. It was so bad. It was like the blood was um, blocked off on my finger. Like if you see in the pictures, you'll see how bad it was. I spent like most of the nights um, trying to get it off my finger until one night I just couldn't take it anymore. The next morning I went to find a jeweler and they cut it off. Like they literally dismantled my ring. It was so bad, but I didn't care at that point because I was like, get this thing off of me. So. Right now, I do not have my wedding ring on. I haven't had it on for a while, um, just because there's no point. It's just, it, I've got it fixed, but um, I'm just still afraid. <laughs> so I'm waiting for my fingers to actually come down from their swelling completely, and then I'll put it back on. But yeah, that is not how I wanted my baby moon to end, but you know, these things happen. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed episode three of African and Pregnant. Next is gonna be the labor story so you guys make sure you check it out next week again because that was something that is something that did not go according to plan at all so make sure you subscribe and you'll hear when the next video is up you'll find out when the next video is up more like all right see you next time <laughs>